Mind maps are a great way of gathering and organizing material for books, articles, theses, and technical documentation, in fact, any sort of writing. When I write books or articles, I start by creating a mind map of the outline for the book, with the concepts that I want to cover as the top level branches, and then details as necessary, so that I have enough information there, so that I know what I want to cover. At this stage, it's more along the lines of a brainstorming session, as covered in the video about brainstorming. Sometimes it also includes note-taking and research, as covered in the video about note-taking, where I'll add branch notes with the excerpts of the material and hyperlinks to the source material on the branches. I've heard from people who use Novamind for writing novels and short stories tell me that they create similar mind maps with the main points of the storyline, and sometimes create character profiles with the physical appearance, language patterns, character traits, and personal history and relationships all mind mapped out. There seems to be a lot of variation in the way novelists approach their writing using mind maps, and seeing as I haven't yet written any novels myself, all I can do is pass on these suggestions. So, at the end of this process, you have an outline of the story, book, or article, but it's not usually grouped and ordered the way that you would want it for the finished book. So, how I approach the organization process is that I graph the branches so that the main concepts and supporting concepts are arranged as branches and sub-branches. This gives me an idea of the size of each area of information. At the same time, I'm thinking about the order of the information so that it's presented in a logical progression, and the information is being introduced in order building on the previous information. Now I group it into chapters, and for ease of understanding, I keep each chapter to about seven main points, because people can, on average, hold seven concepts in their short-term memory at once. And that's a comfortable number to work with. Sometimes I'll go up to nine main points where necessary, but I try not to go beyond that, because there's a high likelihood of inducing information overload in the reader. This might sound like quite a few steps, but in fact this process is usually pretty quick, and you'll have an outline and overall content organization in very short order. The next step, if it's a book rather than an article, is to use the new map from branch function to take each chapter and create a mind map for that chapter. If your overall mind map had detailed information on it, you would remove the detailed information and just have the main points on that mind map, so that you can use it as an overview of the book. Now, for each chapter, you have approximately seven main points, and you can extend and add as many child branches as you need to cover the main points, which will become your headings and subheadings in the text, and then add the body text to each branch as branch notes. Of course, being in mind map format, you're not constricted to write sequentially, you can add the body text in any order that you like. When you're ready, you can export the mind map document with all the chapter mind maps into Microsoft Word format, and all the branches and sub-branches will come out as outline levels within the document, and the branch notes will come out as body text, so you can easily apply Microsoft Word styles to the document to format it nicely. And also, you'll be able to generate a table of contents from it directly. But in doing this, you're losing the power of mind mapping for your readers, so what I do is spend a few minutes on the layout of the mind maps, and then export them as PDF images, and then embed them into the document with the overall outline mind map at the start of the book, as another form of table of contents, and then at the start of each chapter, I have a chapter mind map, which shows people the main points that are covered in that chapter. As you can see, I try to make them visually interesting by having different background colors and different styles included in the mind maps. But at the same time, if there is something related across chapters, I'll use the same image in both places so you have a visual connection. Our brains love color and flow, and having different shapes and colors makes them both visually appealing as well as memorable, while the structure makes the information content easily understood and remembered too. If the book is the type where you want people to take notes, you can include a blank mind map at the end of each chapter with just the main branches so people can make their own notes as they go. Having mind maps in the book means that when the reader returns to the book later, they'll be able to just take a quick glance at the mind map and instantly recall the content. So using mind maps can dramatically speed up the process of writing, 
and at the same time leads to a much higher quality of output. And it completely avoids writer's block because you have the structure in place right from the start and you can work on the content in any order. And if you get stuck at all, you can use the techniques that we covered in the brainstorming video for coming up with new ideas to get your thinking going again. I just can't imagine writing a book without mind mapping now. It would just be so slow and tedious. So get stuck into your next writing project using the power of mind mapping.